Hi everybody, it's Frank here. I recently made a video on how to use a diskless workstation and live DVD running Linux for secure online banking. I mentioned that I've been doing this for years and in that time I've used various old computers that were basically leftovers from prior system upgrades. My current system is an 8 year old AMD motherboard with 2 gigs of RAM that was a dirt cheap build when new and found a second life as a dedicated diskless workstation. It still works great after all these years and connects to an old parallel port laser printer that would have otherwise been destined for the landfill. I use it with a KVM switch I had laying around to connect to my existing monitor and keyboard. No worries. So what if you don't have an old computer or laptop sitting around? You don't have an extra printer or KVM switch and you just don't want the clutter of another system that's only occasionally used. One option is to install a removable hard drive tray and simply remove the drive and slide it back in when finished. If you go this route, use full disk encryption and make sure you get a good quality drive bay as the connectors in the cheap ones sometimes don't work well and can corrupt data. Been there, seen that. But if you're handy with a soldering iron, I have another solution. I'm going to show you a fairly simple way to hook up a switch you can use to electrically disconnect the internal hard drive and use it as a diskless workstation when needed and then restart it with the drive switched back in again for normal use. Okay, so I pulled all these cables out here just to show what we've got. I've got my hard drive down here plugged into a SATA connector and I have this long Molex connector that's doing nothing and I found this bracket in my junk box and it already has these little holes drilled into it. This is for a rear speaker and center speaker outputs. But it'll work perfectly for my switch if I can find a switch that'll fit in that hole. And what I'm going to do is mount this with a switch in it right here. And then I'm going to use this extension. And this extension has the serial ATA connector on one end and it has a Molex connector on the other end. And I can just click those together like that over here and then run it across. So what I'm going to do, I want to be able to measure to my hard drive here and I'm going to splice it right here and have that connect to that switch and then tie up all these cables of course. So here's a switch I found, dual pole, dual throw. It's got plenty of current carrying capability. That's not a problem. It's a little bit ugly. The good news is with the washer it'll fit right in the hole in that switch plate that I have. So what I'll do is just clean this up. It should be good. So here's the finished product. What I did is cut the 5 and 12 volt power leads and connected them across the switch so that it simultaneously switches power on both. Use a continuity meter to verify things when finished. You want to be absolutely certain that you don't have the yellow and red reversed through the switch or connected together somehow. I left the ground wires untouched since the hard drive should always have a ground. The switch fit nicely on my plate with the help of a couple washers. Just got to go put it in now and see if it works. Okay, I've got this thing installed now. I've got my little switch on the plate mounted in there. I've got my wires all hooked up. Switch is on and off just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and tidy up all these wires here and close this thing up and test it out. See if it works. Now, you can always use an existing cover plate and drill a hole in it or mount the switch on the case itself somewhere. Since I have easy access to the back of this computer and I wanted the switch to be well out of the way, this worked out perfectly. With the switch in the up or on position, I tested it out with the hard drive attached and all is good. With the machine powered off now, I'm going to switch the drive off and give it a test. I've already got the BIOS set to boot from the DVD if a hard drive is not found, and I just leave my live disk in the drive now forever. In this version of Mint, I get this log on screen pop up. Just ignore this. You can see in the top right that it'll auto log in in a few seconds. Just wait for it. And here's my desktop ready to go. From power on to desktop took 2 minutes and 51 seconds. Not that much faster in my old system with less RAM, but the startup time is really unimportant in this application. And that's it. From here I can dive right into the digital deep end of the internet with a clean OS to use for secure sites, or I can check out those dodgy links people send me without fear of catching anything lasting. Hope you found that useful, and as always, thanks for watching. Cheers.